Welcome to problem set 30. Our problems today will be from the topic amino acid metabolism. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that the worksheet to accompany this problem set video is available online through my website. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started with number one. Number one, which of the following would you expect to undergo transamination during catabolism? A, glucose, B, amino acids, C, lactose, D, triglycerides. Remember that amino acids have the amino group that needs to be removed in uh, amino acid catabolism, and that's the first step is to remove that amino group in the process known as transamination. So the answer to number one is B, amino acids. None of the other options, A through D, contain the amino functional group. Okay, number two, match the name of the process to its description. And I didn't actually give you the name, so I guess I shouldn't say that this is a matching, more that you have to come up with a name for these processes, A through D, based on the description. So for A, the description is an eight-step cycle in which two carbons enter as acetyl coenzyme A and two carbons exit as carbon dioxide. So what process does that describe? Hopefully you can recognize that as the Krebs cycle, or if you call it the citric acid cycle. Two ways to say the same thing. So the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. I'll go ahead and write it. Okay. B, a 10-step process in which glucose is broken down into two units of pyruvate. Hopefully you recognize that description as describing the process of glycolysis, the breakdown of glucose into two three-carbon units of pyruvate. So that is glycolysis. C, the process in which reduced coenzymes are reoxidized by ultimately passing their electrons to oxygen. That is the electron transport chain. Remember that our reduced coenzymes get reoxidized by passing their electrons into the electron transport chain, but the ultimate acceptor of those electrons and hydrogen ions is oxygen from the air that we breathe. And D, the process in which the amino group of glutamate is removed as an ammonium ion. Be very careful here. The removal of the amino group occurs in transamination, and an oxidative deamination. Remember that in transamination, the amino group is just transferred to another molecule, an alpha keto acid, typically alpha ketoglutarate to make glutamate. It's an oxidative deamination that the amino group is removed as an ammonium ion. So this is describing oxidative deamination, not transamination, which transfers the amino group, but it transfers it to an alpha keto acid, does not remove it as an ammonium ion. All right, number three. There are two possible fates for the amino group from amino acid metabolism. What are these two fates? Okay, so remember that once the alpha ketoglutarate picks up the amino group, it can either carry that amino group to sites in need of nitrogen for the synthesis of nitrogen-containing biomolecules, 
so anabolic purposes, or it can carry that nitrogen. If that nitrogen is in excess, it can carry that nitrogen to be excreted as urea in our urine. Okay, so two possible fates. One is for the synthesis of nitrogen containing biomolecules. Or two, it can be excreted as urea in our waste, primarily our urine. Okay. All right, number four. What are the possible fates for the carbon skeleton of an amino acid during metabolism? Okay, and the fate of the carbon skeleton is quite varied. So remember that the carbon skeleton can be used for anabolic purposes for biosynthesis. Okay, so used for biosynthesis. be used to make non-essential amino acids, things of that nature. Uh, but that carbon skeleton can also be broken down into pyruvate, acetyl coenzyme A, or different Krebs cycle intermediates, which means that it can also be fully oxidized to carbon dioxide in the Krebs cycle and used for energy production for the synthesis of ATP. Okay, so complete catabolism for energy and then of course only 10 to 15 percent of our daily energy comes from the complete catabolism of amino acids in this way what happens to the others well they can also be used for fatty acid synthesis anything that has a pathway to acetyl coenzyme a can be used for fatty acid synthesis in the process of lipogenesis and then of course those fatty acids get tacked on to glycerol to make triglycerides that are stored in our cells. Uh, they can be used to make ketone bodies if they're ketogenic and they can also be used for the synthesis of glucose if they're glucogenic amino acids and of course that glucose can be used to synthesize glycogen which is then stored as well in our bodies. So that's right here, energy storage as either fats, I'll write triglycerides as triglycerides, well, I'll write fatty acids which can then be made into triglycerides as glucose, which can then be made into glycogen, and as ketone bodies. And remember that the fate really depends on what the amino acid is converted into, and therefore whether it is a ketogenic, glucogenic, or both ketogenic and glucogenic amino acid. All right, that will conclude our problem set 30. I hope that I have helped you to better understand amino acid metabolism, and I thank you very much for tuning in.